Number 64. Which bond in each of the following pairs of bonds is the strongest? And then we have a carbon to hydrogen bond or an oxygen to hydrogen bond. Well, in order to answer this type of question, we just have to look at the differences between the two types of bonds. Now, in this case, I see that between carbon and hydrogen, there's a single bond, and an oxygen and hydrogen, there's a single bond as well. So that makes no difference. But the difference comes from what the hydrogen is being bound to. The only difference that I see here is that on this example, carbon is being bound to the hydrogen versus oxygen being bound to the, the hydrogen. What does that have to do with being a strong or a weak bond? Well, the idea here is that strongest S goes with S. The strongest bond is the shortest bond. So the shortest distance between the two atoms. So S goes with S. So if you want to be a strong bond, that bond's got to be tight. That bond's got to be really, really, really short. If you're super close to someone, right, that's a really great, strong bond between, you know, the two people. So same type of idea in chemistry. So now just know that that idea comes from your atomic radius trend. We have to find out where carbon and oxygen are on the periodic table. Now, before we do that, what I'm just going to say is that for each of these, we have an arbitrary little... Uh, that's a little bit too big for hydrogen. Hydrogen is really small. And there should be the same size, but we have H and H. And now we're going to have a bond between carbon and oxygen. But let's find carbon and oxygen on the periodic table, which is this box. And they're in the same period, right? Carbon is roughly over here on the periodic table, and oxygen is over here. It's separated by nitrogen. Just know that as you go from left to right, your atomic radius is going to start dropping. So if carbon is this size, oxygen has to be smaller. So let's take that into consideration. Carbon out of the two of them, well, maybe we'll draw it like out here. Carbon whoop, is going to be much larger than oxygen. So oxygen might probably be, it's got to be a little bit bigger than, than hydrogen. But maybe it's like this. But if we see here, we kind of put them on the same playing field. We'll do that. But the bond, technically, from the center to the center, and I'll say that this is CH, and this is OH, you'll see that the smaller the radius, the smaller the atom, the smaller the bond. And if I just take this bond and I just overlay it, ah, it is shorter. So the shorter the bond, the stronger the bond. So in this case, this means that OH is the stronger bond. Now, what does this mean in terms of chemistry? Well, kind of like the same thing for relationships, right? If you got a strong bond, it takes a lot of effort to break that bond up between the two people. Same thing with chemistry. If you have an OH bond, it's going to take a lot of energy to break that bond away. And that's basically what this whole thing is. Especially you'll see this with organic chemistry. Dun, dun, dun. But hopefully we'll have videos on there. We, have, we do have some for the beginning of Orgo, but hopefully we could get into the reactions but, you know, just check the channel out. But thank you so much. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments um, and I'll talk to you soon. OK. All right. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you in the next lesson. OK. Bye bye.